You booked it, episode 159. What's going on, everyone? Thank you for joining me today on You Booked It, the number one podcast where you learn how to create a successful entertainment career. Every episode is a masterclass on how to move your career forward. Do you want to take your career to the next level? As a listener of this podcast, I am opening up the opportunity for you to work one-on-one with me to build the foundation of what you need to create a successful career in today's world. Regardless if you're starting out or you've been doing this a while, we will go in-depth on everything that actually creates long-term success. If you're interested, head over to youbookedpodcast.com forward slash coaching or simply click the link in the description of this episode and let's chat. Okay, let's get started. I am excited to introduce my guest today, Nicholas Cunningham. Are you ready for this, Nicholas? I sure am. Brilliant. Nicholas is an Australian dancer and choreographer who's been living in New York City for 10 years. His career started with a move to Paris to work at the Moulin Rouge. From there, he has worked around the world, including London's West End and on Broadway. Nicholas is the head of dance at the Institute for American Musical Theatre and currently working towards a BFA specializing in choreography at the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts. Nicholas, that is a quick intro of who you are and what you've done, but why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, fill in the gaps, and a little bit more about what you do as a professional in the entertainment industry. Yeah, absolutely. So I am from Brisbane, specifically in Australia, and I moved to New York uh, after I was in London for five years. And I moved here with a show called La Cage au Fall. I was the associate choreographer on that. And that was when I made my big move to fulfill the biggest dream that I had, which was moving to New York to perform on Broadway. And then after 10 years of living here, I have decided to fulfill my dream in doing choreography. And I've taken myself back to school. And I am looking forward to seeing what the horizon holds. Yeah, brilliant. Such a good adventure. And was it Moulin Rouge? That's what originally brought you over to Europe? That was, yeah, that was my first move. I was living in Perth and I auditioned for the Moulin Rouge in 2004. And then I started my contract over in Paris in 2005. And I was there for about a year. And then I got a job on West End, actually. I auditioned for a show called Moving Out which was choreographed by Twyla Tharp and to the music of Billy Joel. And then I went over there and started performing on West End. It was really quite amazing, actually. I was very lucky to have that opportunity. Yeah, fantastic. And Moulin Rouge is such a beautiful, iconic show, isn't it? It's incredible. Yeah, my wife actually performed in Le Nouveau Lève just down the road. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So, yeah, small world, hey? Love it. Beautiful. And let's dig in to this first section here. And Nicholas, look, I am a sucker for a good quote. What is your favorite quote you'd like to share with everyone? Wow. I have two really good quotes that I like to live by. The first one would be, a life lived in fear is a life half lived, which is by a gentleman called Baz Luhrmann. I Mm. saw Strictly Ballroom, which is what it's from. I saw Strictly Ballroom when I was about six years old. And they have that as their main sort of title just under Strictly Ballroom. They have the quote, a life lived in fear is a life half lived. And something just rang really true when I first read that. And I have found it a little difficult to implement it into my life every single day, but it's definitely something that's I that I have really, you know, searched to be more like. The other one is a vulnerability is our most accurate measure of courage, which is by a wonderful woman called Brené Brown. And I think it's a really important thing to be able to be vulnerable in many aspects of your life. And it just is such a, a special feeling to have when you finally access that vulnerable spot in your life because you really can find an authentic way of living, I feel. For sure. And I also find it's very empowering 
as well because Definitely. you realize the world's not going to fall apart when you put <laughs> everything out there right and you're not yeah. going to fall apart that you can do it Right. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's so funny because I was thinking about those things recently and about fear and vulnerability and how those two can connect. And you kind of have to get over that, those fears to become vulnerable and to have courage to also be vulnerable. It's all this intertwining emotional field that we have to challenge ourselves to do every day. For sure. It's certainly a challenge. It's much easier to read a quote or to say it than to practice it, obviously. Mm -hmm. But Definitely. it's also one of those things that is also kind of a muscle in the sense that the more you do it, the more times you break through your fear, the more times that you put yourself out on the line and you are vulnerable, the easier it becomes to do it again. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's really important that you find out those things earlier on in life, which is why I always encourage the people around me who are ever younger than me, I'm always telling them to try and be their most authentic self and be vulnerable and, and they'll find really good experiences come out from it. Yeah, great. Really like those two quotes. Thank you for those. Mm, yeah. And let's get into this next section here. And Nicholas, of course, you are an entertainer. I'm an entertainer. And I think that you'd agree that the entertainment industry is one of the most subjective, brutally honest, and personally emotional industries in existence. And you know as well as I that in order to create and have a successful career in this industry, like you're having now, takes a lot of dedication and hard work. And while, yeah, there's an outrageous amount of fun and excitement doing what we do. There are also our fair share of obstacles, challenges, and failures we are going to experience and we're going to have to move forward through. So tell us, what is one key challenge, obstacle, or failure you've experienced in your career and how did you come out the other side better because of it? Oh gosh, one key challenge. <laughs> I think I in this career, down, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think in this career, it's like you, you're battling things every day. I even just said to you about vulnerability and fear and courage and trying to find all those things. I think the biggest thing for me, the challenge that I have in a lot of my life, and I still do it to this day, is comparing myself to mm. other people and other people's careers and I, I think that's the biggest obstacle that I've had, which really leads to believing in myself. And I, I found that when I was growing up, it was more often in the studio or in an audition room. And then social media came around and it does have a good side to it. But I think it also is a it can be a little bit toxic sometimes if you don't quite have your battle armor on uh mm. so i've just been careful to check myself every time that i go on social media now and just make sure that i'm actually supporting people and thinking no you know what good for you uh and listening to myself when i really get upset or if i feel that i'm not doing enough or anything like that and i think performers really do feel like they're not doing enough most of the time which has been really difficult during covid and the pandemic and everything because we've had to stop and take a breath so it's been a really lovely time to self-reflect and realize that most of the time i'm enough i I am so glad that you brought that up. Thank you, because yeah. the challenge of comparing ourselves to others and feeling like we're enough has come up so often mm. on this podcast with other guests who, like yourself, have had incredible careers, yeah. right? A lot of people think, look, I'm going to get to Broadway, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to achieve whatever it is that is in my head for my goal of life. They achieve it, and they think that's it, that you've made it, you've arrived. It doesn't stop there. We always continue wanting to grow, and we always are looking around to see what other people are doing. And it's okay, like you said, I love that you said, hey, when I'm on social media, I'm there to support people, to encourage them, and to not flip it to being negative and being toxic, because it's so easy to do and it's so easy to get caught up in that and that you also said look i purposely when i go on social media i'm checking myself mm -hmm. i'm consciously consuming content and not just going down rabbit holes that make you feel awful and it's so important that everyone listening that you really take note of what nicholas just said because like i said this is 
come up time and time again. Mm. This is clearly a fundamental of what it takes to create a successful entertainment career. It's something that is a challenge for everybody Definitely. in this career. And to pay attention to that, because that's what's making this podcast such a mm. fantastic resource for all aspiring entertainers and those of us that are in amongst the meat of our careers. This is something we all deal with. And thank you, mm. Nicholas, for bringing that up. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's really important to not only check in with yourself when you're scrolling through social media or looking at what other people are doing and remembering that is the most positive part of their lives and they're wanting to share what they're doing at this time in their lives because we don't have uh, theater and things like that. But it's always good to check yourself when you've put your phone down or you've gotten off your computer. It's always really mm. important to see how you feel. And I've always thought that it's a really important way of testing your emotions at that point. Because sometimes you come off social media and you're like, oh, like, I'm not too bothered about that. Or sometimes you come off it and you think, oh, I'm not like doing enough. Or then other times you actually don't think about it at all. So I think that's a really good test to check in with how social media makes you feel. One. 100%. Mm -hmm. And let's move on to a time that I like to call your spotlight moment. That one moment in time you realized, yes, I am going to be an entertainer for a living. Or maybe it was, yes, this is what I need to be doing in the entertainment industry. Tell us about that. That's such a good question. I think my spotlight moment would have been when I started watching MGM musicals. Mm. I think that was the moment when I thought this is what I want to do. It wasn't a, mo a moment when I embodied it. So I wasn't actually dancing when I f felt like I need to do this. It was more of watching Bob Fosse and Ann Miller and Tommy Rahl and Bobby Van and Eleanor Powell and all those incredible performers in those MGM musicals and just watching those numbers just come alive and watching their costumes twirl and all those fabulous things about those films that yeah. we don't really see these days anymore. But I just had a really great mom who just had this knowledge and she's a nurse. She was a psychiatric nurse, so she wasn't even in the industry. And she just, I think she had a fondness to it as well. And we were watching them and I just thought, this is what I want to do. And I think that's where I began my career was watching those films. Yes. All of those MGM movies, love them so much. And you're right. We don't see that anymore, right? No. And Oh, I, what is, I'm blanking on the scene, but I guess, how about this? It sums it up in so many scenes is how they, how long they'll go with these one single shot Absolutely. scenes, right? And just the perfection. Yeah. And you know that they, they did have. that thousands of times, you know, well, yeah. maybe not thousands, but they did it a lot and they yeah. probably had many takes and things like that. But I know absolutely what you're talking about with those sort of long takes. And you just think, how on earth are they sustaining this? And it, yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, just on another level. And part of me is really hoping that through this COVID time, when every, this whole industry is getting really digitized again, it's mm. that we have more of that start to happen. Absolutely. It would that be great. We, yeah, that we see more of that MGM movie kind of feel again. That would be really cool. Yeah. I think I did a film a long time ago with Rob Marshall, the film Nine with Daniel Day-Lewis, and we were in a big number called Cinema Italiano. And I think Rob does a really fantastic job of bringing that MGM feel up to the 21st century, especially when he did Mary Poppins Returns and Chicago and those sort of films. But it's pretty hard to replicate that dynamic as performers. And I think it's interesting when they when they cast certain people in roles. And I get a bit frustrated sometimes because I know that there are people that do all three eight times a yep. week on Broadway. 
but sometimes you have to pull a name to make a, a film work. So it's just interesting how the industry turns sometimes, but I, I do hope to see more of it. And I'm so glad that independent choreographers are really going for it with their creativity and expressing themselves and letting other people know what they're doing via the internet and technology. It's fantastic. For sure. And let's piggyback on all that real quick and talk about your number one booked it moment. Walk us through that day, the auditions and callbacks, if they happen to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. What was going on in your life? And what about that moment makes it your favorite booked it moment? It brings back so many good memories. I mean, also terrifying memories because <laughs> those, those moments in life, you're hanging on an edge and you're just hoping yeah. that things go right. I think I have one that would possibly top all of the moments that I've had in my life. And I've had some really special moments and I'm very grateful for them. But this one specifically stands out because... It was at a time in my life where moving out had closed on West End abruptly. It didn't. It wasn't received well in London, and we only were performing for six weeks. I think it was at the Apollo Victoria, and then Wicked moved into our theatre after that. And after that, I felt pretty down on myself, and I was a bit upset about what was happening with my career. And I thought it was going to kick off, and all those things. But I started auditioning again and it was audition after audition after audition. I kept going and going and I probably auditioned for about 20 different things in about six months and I was getting callbacks and then not getting callbacks and I hadn't really moved forward. And I was working on a small gig because I was really looking forward to getting another show and I was picking up small work here and there and I was working on this McCain's frozen chip advert and we were doing a very musical theater chips glorious chips to Oliver's food <laughs> glory of food <laughs> and I can remember that we were doing a performance on the set and I met this woman, her name is Isabel Mortimer, and she had danced with Matthew Bourne's company, which is a very well-known company in England. And she was talking to me and she said that there was auditions going around for Swan Lake, Matthew Bourne's Swan Lake, which is the all male version of Swan Lake. And she said, you'd be fantastic in it. She's like, you should go in an audition. They have auditions this Sunday or whatever day it was on the weekend. I think it may have been Sunday. And I was like, yes, great, fantastic. I'm going to go. And she said, just go and enjoy yourself. I didn't know at the time that she'd already been in like three of his shows. So it was interesting to look back and like I am now, it's just interesting and funny. But when I went, I was doing the audition and everything. And we had a callback the next day and I got a callback and I was super nervous because I knew that Matthew was going to be there. Mm -hmm. And it was that point. I was like, I've been in for all these shows and I really have nothing to lose and I'm just going to enjoy myself. And if I don't get this, I'm probably going to move back home and, and stop dancing because I just, I can't really continue on <laughs> this path of disappointment. I really was thinking that it was all or nothing. And then during the audition, there was this bit that we danced to called The Nines, which was this part in Act Two, which is the Swan Act. And we were auditioning it. And I could not get the timing to save my like I could not get it at all. And Matthew Bourne was sitting at the front of the room and he stopped the audition. There was probably about 50 guys in there. He stopped the audition and he looked at me and he was like, Nicholas you go outside right now and you figure out what this timing is and then you come back in here and show me what it is. And I just was like, oh Whoa. my goodness. <laughs> I just, the, the color just went completely out of me and I was like, yeah. oh, I feel sick to my stomach. And I was like, okay, if I don't figure this out, this is, I have a feeling this is going to be a make or break moment. So I went outside and I took some serious breaths and just focused as much as, it, I, I've never been more focused in my life, probably. And I went back into the room and he made me do it by myself. And by some, you know, universal fortune, it's like plopped down into my brain. I managed to do it. And he just kind of looked at me and 
you know, gave a little smirk. And then I just kind of went to the side and dripping with sweat and anxiety. <laughs> and then after that, he they made cuts and everything. And I made it through the next round. They made another cut. And then they sat us down after that cut. And they said that the tour was going to go to Australia for four months. And I was just so excited to even think that I was still in the room when they were talking about where the tour was going to go. And then I finished for the day, went back to the McCain's chip ad, <laughs> saw <laughs> Isabel. She'd found out that night that I would booked the job, but she couldn't say anything to oh. me. So she was, I was at work going, oh my goodness, it was so horrible. I think I didn't do this and didn't do that. And she was like, you need, you need to calm down. Just take a breath. Um, because she knew that I had the job. And then three days, yeah. three or four days later, Matthew called me and he said he would like to bring me on the tour. So I think it was uh, a very interesting, stressful, also like eye-opening. I felt defeated before I went in because of all those auditions and then I booked it. And then it was like, uh, it was such a gift because then I got to go home and perform in this now like world famous show. And I got to perform for all my family and friends and everything and go home to Australia. So it was like a double whammy. It was like, I got to go on this amazing tour that went home to Australia. Plus I got to be in this amazing company and the show really changed my life. So that is definitely my number one booked at moment. Oh, that is so good. <laughs> I really like in the beginning, you said, you know what? You'd had all of these, all of these auditions and callbacks that just weren't working out, right? And you mm. said, you know what? I've got nothing to lose. <laughs> Let's go out there. And that the key part of that as well has come up so many times in people's booked it stories. Yeah. Is they go into the room and <laughs> they had, they got over it. They said, you know what? I'm tired of feeling nervous and overwhelmed. Just... I'm just going to go in there, just do me, and let's see what happens. And it's that state of mind that we're finding as well mm -hmm. is truly a fundamental to getting booked. Yeah, absolutely. And I was listening to your interview with Christine Cornish Smith, and she's a good friend of mine. And she also had the same experience with just saying, you know what, I have nothing to lose. I'm just going to go for it. And yeah. the more you're yourself, it just makes so much of a difference. And from being in the business this long now, I've nearly been working for 20 years. And it just really shows because I've been on the other side of the table now. I've not only been auditioning, but I've been an associate choreographer on Broadway show. And it's really interesting because you being on that side of the table, you want that person to be themselves and do the best that they can do. We don't expect people to be awful or anything like that. We want to find incredible people. So if you bring that authentic self to the room that's the most important thing because if you apply like some strange person that you think should be in that room it just doesn't it's not the same and that's it's really important it's hard to apply but it is really important absolutely and like also in the audition you said there's this part could not get the timing i've had mm -hmm. so many instances where i feel so <laughs> uncoordinated and I'm like I swear to god I can dance people but for whatever yeah. reason it's these little things every once in a while just nothing computes I know it's the weirdest it's so thing random yeah but then when yeah. it does click you're like oh there it is I don't exactly. know why I was struggling yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, love those moments not in the moment fun to reflect on them but <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally for sure brilliant and let's take a moment to talk about the present what projects are you working on now? What are you looking forward to? And it's a weird time, right? We're amidst yes. this global pandemic. How do you see the entertainment industry moving forward in the next couple of years? Oh, gosh. I, I'm working on, like you said in my introduction, I am working on my BFA in uh, fine art. Well, sorry, but Bachelor in Performing Arts, we call it in Australia, but over here it's called a Bachelor in fine arts and I'm specializing in choreography. And I decided to do that probably around August. I decided to enroll back into my university that I graduated from in 2004, but I've been thinking about doing this for a long time. And 
I have decided that's a really good realm for me right now, which has really helped me explore my movement vernacular as a choreographer. And it's made me sit down and really think about my practice and who my inhabitants are. And I'm researching what is the space between an idea and creation? How do we come up with ideas? And I thought it was a really good time, like a lot of people, to go back to school and use this opportunity to be able to improve myself as a creative and an artist and really work towards honing my craft as a choreographer. So I've been doing uh, a unit in that, which is self made and you just can choose what you want to do. And I've been doing a project and being able to work in a studio with one other person, socially distanced and everything, and making sure that we're safe and feel comfortable and being able to be in a space with someone and choreograph has just been such a gift in this time, which is mostly my school has been the place that has given me the space to be able to do that, which is the Institute for American Musical Theatre. So I've been using their space and being sure that I've widened my scope with choreography. But I think I'm most looking forward to is creating. I just love making things up and making art and continuing to contribute to the world in whatever way I know how. I feel that a lot of artists should do that because that's the way that you feel your self-worth fill up. And yeah, I think the industry, it's sad. It's really sad. And we've been through such a difficult year. And I think the one thing that's most incredible about New York is that it's resilient. It's just such a resilient city. And even when we are having our moment, like we are now with just a, a downtime or something, it's just I know that the industry will come back and it will be different, but I think it will be extraordinary to watch evolve. And I've been saying that I want to be here when it happens. I want to be in the middle of it. I want to see how theater takes a turn. I want to see how people create and how we evolve into this new era of what theatrics can be. It's really exciting. And I feel it's going to be a bit complicated at the beginning, but I think once you find your feet, it'll become more natural. And then all of a sudden we'll find maybe in a year or two after things have turned around that we might be able to go back to theaters being f at full capacity and whatnot, but it will be different. But performing artists are resilient. You know, we have to be as we get knocked down every single other day, <laughs> auditioning right. and doing things. So I think with our backbones and our armor that we battle every day with to go into this business and the the thick skin that we've built, I don't think a pandemic is going to hold us back. No, love <laughs> your optimism and insight on that. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, of course. And it is time to move on to one of my favorite sections in the interview. I call it the Grease Lightning Round. Mm. I am going to ask you a handful of questions. I want you to answer them as quickly and concisely as possible. Okay. One after another. Are you ready? I am ready. I love this stuff. Brilliant first question. What was the one thing holding you back from committing to a career as an entertainer? Believing in myself. Second question. <laughs> what is the best piece of advice you have ever received? Ooh, you don't have to be the absolute best at what you do to be successful, but you have to want it the most, I think. Or you can be absolutely terrified and still be brilliant. Oh, absolutely <laughs> true. Third question, what is something that is working for you right now? Or if you'd like to go pre-COVID, what was working for you before our industry went on pause? I think I'm going to go with something that's working for me now, and that would be practicing compassion, having less judgment. Yeah. 
Do you mean generally speaking for yourself, for others? Yeah, for for myself mainly. And I think I've been encouraging people around me to have more compassion with themselves, especially during this time, because everyone, especially in the business, is saying that they've taken a step back or that they're going backwards. And I'm like, well, if you're taking a step back, it's a step back to take in perspective. And I don't think now's this time to be overcritical about certain things and just to practice a little bit more compassion and in turn it's made me you know reflect on myself and just have less judgment about myself yeah yes take a step back because you're taking perspective Mm -hmm. that is so well said Mm. (laughs) and the fourth question what is your best resource whether that is a book a movie a youtube video maybe a podcast or piece of technology you have found is helping your career right now brene brown i said a quote about her and i always go back to a brene brown book she is like such a good human being and she is the queen of compassion and less judgment and being vulnerable and having courage and she says if you're not in the arena she doesn't want to hear what you have to say you know turning up making sure that you're challenging yourself every day i think she has she's got fantastic books but she has some really good interviews online and youtube and all those things it's such a great gift to hear what she has to say and she's a professional as well she's not just regurgitating what she's heard she's actually researched it for a long time so i have a lot of faith in her great she is fantastic Mm -hmm. and the fifth question if you had to start your career from scratch but you still had all the knowledge and experience you've collected from your career in this industry What would you do or not do? Would you do anything differently or would you keep it the same? I've had to actually start my career again in three different countries (laughs) in three because I started in Paris and then I started in London and then I came to New York and started again and both there was a little bit of a connection. Uh, So it's not really that new for me, but I think the main thing that I would have changed is to be more present. I was always looking for the next thing and I was in a show and I was looking for the next thing and I was wanting to book the next gig and I was searching for, and we have to be a little bit forward in our careers to do that. But I also think it's just as important to be present and make sure you're enjoying the moment. It's really hard, but I think I'm going to work a bit harder to change that narrative. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Mm. I was also, for the vast majority of the beginning of my career, was that. And I really wish I would have been more present. And currently right now, I am re-listening to The Power of Now. Have you read oh, that book? Amazing. Eckhart Tolle, it's so good. It is, and yeah. it's, it's mind-blowing. When you, you just have to sit with things for a while, don't you? Yeah, it's absolutely. It's a mind trip, but it's so good. Yeah, it's so it really good. And I think... Th- yeah, I think it's so important. And it's, I think probably both you and I know that when you do get to a later stage in your career, you look back and you think, oh, like I performed on the Tony Awards, but it just, I didn't take it in. And I look back and I'm like, oh, I wish I would have enjoyed that moment a little more rather than been stressed out about the way that my costume was fitting or if I didn't look good as opposed to just really enjoying the moment. Yeah. Uh Agreed. And the last question, what is the golden nugget knowledge drop you've learned from your successful career in this industry you'd like to leave with our listeners? Mm, That is such a good question and it is very hard to answer. But (laughs) (laughs) I will say the one thing is to listen, is to really listen to the people around you. It's really important when you're learning, when you're at school, when you're booking your first job, when you're going into that first rehearsal, if even later on in your career, but more so at the beginning, and I learned this, I don't know where from, but I made sure that I listened to the people that were around me that knew more than me. Mm -hmm. And I respected that and made sure that I was soaking every little bit of information that I possibly could up because... These people that you work with that are, may have more experience and stuff, they have been doing what they have been doing. So I think that's a really good golden nugget is to listen all the time. <laughs> Make sure that you're very active at listening. 
Yes, very well said. And to wrap up this interview, Nicholas, it is time to give yourself a plug. Ooh. Where can we find you? How do our listeners connect with you? Is there anything you want to promote? Yeah, I have an Instagram, which is Nicholas Louis Cunningham. And the next one that I have is like my creatives page, which is Cunningham Creatives. And then I would always love to shout out to my school, which is the Institute for American Musical Theatre, which has been running live classes for the past 12 weeks, actually, in person. And we've done an incredible job at keeping COVID protocol at a high, high, high level. And we've done a fantastic job and we're actually going into our winter showcase. Yeah, brilliant. And for everyone listening out there, I have put the links to all of Nicholas's social media and you can go check it all out. And also be sure to share this podcast with your fellow entertainers, coaches, teachers, arts and entertainment educators, and anyone you know aspiring to create a career in this industry. You Booked It is the number one resource of expertise on how to actually create a successful entertainment career, and it is integral to helping them succeed and helping you create a better, more fulfilling career in this wild and crazy industry. Nicholas, thank you so much for being here today. It's been so great to talk with you and spreading your knowledge and wisdom today. Thank you, Dane. Take care. Thank you so much for joining us today. Don't miss an episode. Every guest drops more value and insight than any other resource out there. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love to hear from you leave us a rating and review. Also, be sure to head over to youbookedatpodcast.com and join our free email community where we dig deep into a continually growing resource of truly actionable things you can be doing right now to help you advance your entertainment career. All the best to you.